Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel where today we are on to Richmond. As the Union, we are going to start the advanced scenario, the full campaign for the On to Richmond module of On to Richmond 2 um, because it also comes with Grant Takes Command. So this is the 1862 Peninsula campaign found in MMP's On to Richmond 2. And here we are um, at the start. Um, this video is, I think it's going to be quick. It's just going to be a, kind of an overview of the campaign. And then for the actual campaign video, I think I'm just going to do kind of turn recaps so it keeps moving and doesn't get bogged down me just moving. Because a lot of these um, great campaigns in American Civil War, are, it's a lot of maneuver and not a lot of action per se. I love the maneuver aspect. I think it's awesome. I think it's like really fascinating and really crunchy um, and there's not a whole lot of rules overhead for these games it's just you get to really get in it and give your go at uh, doing better than they did historically and so to that end what we're going to try to do today is something a little ahistorical which is kind of out of my wheelhouse um, usually I'm very much try to stick to the historical aspect of things but with this um campaign what i've decided to do is do the follow kind of mcclellan's original plan which was the urbana plan so for the advanced scenario the union player gets his choice of four invasion options he gets to come in on the york james peninsula um, from fortress monroe and go the historical path up past yorktown and then Kind of up through here the chickahominy um, you see kind of just down here um I'll just off screen i'll show you i'll show you a tour in a minute but he gets to choose that route he can come in in mob jack bay which is kind of on the um uh, middle peninsula and um that's kind of in gloucester county near gloucester point and it's on the north side of the york river um, so he can come in there. Third option is to come in Urbana, which is what I'm going to do. So you come in on the Rappahannock River. And then the fourth option is to come in at Tappahannock on the Rappahannock River. And, um, but either way, whatever way you come in, your objective is obviously Richmond. The reason McClellan, um, changed his plan from the Urbana plan that invaded the York James Peninsula was because Johnston, who's over here at Chester Depot uh, on the um, Richmond, Fredericksburg, and Potomac Railroad, which is here, um, because he withdrew from Manassas and came down south to um, kind of reinforce Richmond because he thought the Union were going to outflank them um, by crossing the uh, Rappahannock River, I believe. So he came down and that kind of, at least in McClellan's eyes, made a landing at Urbana not on the flank enough of the Confederacy or the Confederate main army. So he chose to invade the York James Peninsula, thinking that he could still steal a march on Johnston and get to Richmond. But obviously when he got to York James Peninsula, Gruder had set up quite the defensive line behind the Warwick River and um, re-fortified Yorktown and uh, McClellan got stuck there for like a month or something crazy. So instead we're going to just stick to the Urbana plan. We'll have a couple of rivers to get through because we're just going to kind of make a straight shot to Richmond and hopefully find somewhere in this area to get a good um, battle against the Army of Northern Virginia. And if we come in here we'll be able to split be, can hopefully be able to split the Confederate forces because we have D.H. Hill and a couple of his brigades here in um, White House Station on the Pamunkey River. And then a couple of Magruder's brigades are kind of in this area between the Pamunkey and the Mattapani. Um, and But then a whole bunch of their other brigades are down on the York James Peninsula still. So they're going to have to hoof it or take a boat up to probably like West Point or something to try to get into this area to be effective. But hopefully McClellan can drive through this way and then he'll have split 
Johnston from Magruder, and he can kind of maybe take one in turn and then push on to Richmond. Um, rather than getting stuck on the Warwick line for so long. So our initial objective, I think, is going to be West Point and um, White House Station. But obviously, D.H. Hill is going to try to destroy some of these ferries um, and contest any crossing when the Union inevitably try to throw down a pontoon bridge. They're also going to have to, the Union is going to have to destroy Gloucester Point. There's a fort down there. I'll show you. I'll take you down there in a minute. There's a fort at Gloucester Point, obviously, and Yorktown. We're going to have to take them eventually so that we can get gunboats up the Pamunkey and York River and um, get supply into this area. All right, so here we are on the York James Peninsula. So you see um, Magruder is here in Yorktown. Gloucester Point has a fort on it and Crump's Brigade. And so basically what you're doing as the Confederates when you set up is you can set up within five hexes, I think of um, 51, 13 or something. There, I don't know. There's a hex in here you have to set up within five hexes of. So Magruder just put basically McLaws, Demi, Division, and a couple other stacks, um, Cobb's Brigade, into Yorktown so that he can amphibious move up the York River to West Point to support D.H. Hill in the defense on the Mattapanai. Um, because right now, all these defenses on the Warwick River are kind of useless, or there's nothing to um, defend against. So the Confederates don't really need to keep a lot down here. There's not much in the Fortress Monroe docks, because I'll show you... This is a big part of this game, which is these off-map boxes. So here in uh, Fortress Monroe, we have three brigades from the Department of Virginia. And obviously it says right here, you need to keep 10 plus manpower in Fort Monroe at all times. So we can't really send, we could, we could send one brigade out onto the map um, on the York James Peninsula, but um, we still have Colston's brigade and Reigns' brigade in Williamsburg to defend the Warwick River line. Um, so it's going to be a while before the Union can really take Yorktown. Um, and obviously they're going to want to take Norfolk eventually. Um, but right now, Hugie and um, his little uh, division is down in Norfolk, so that's plenty to defend against them. Um, McDowell and First Corps are still in Fredericksburg, obviously, because Lincoln hasn't released them yet. And the cool thing about this, as you see, um, so you have to roll, starting on turn 35, you can roll. You have to pass one roll, and then you have to do another roll to see how many units are released. And one of the DRMs is the valley track number. And so what that is, is over here, um, starting on turn 35, the Confederacy can launch a... Um, assault or a, a, a launch an offensive sorry in the valley and the drm is based on how many units the confederacy has sent here and you can keep sending units to the off map you can pull units away so if things are looking really dire we might have to pull jackson back to richmond but maybe if things aren't looking too bad we can send units to jackson and increase the manpower and get an overwhelming victory and then this plus four affects this die roll which means that there might, there probably won't be units, re well, there can't be units released um, if the valley track is plus four. Um, and obviously we also have it, um, we can put people in the Rappahannock box, which is here, um, and that will affect the die roll releasing Fredericksburg. So that's one way just to keep Union units off of the map. And then obviously we have Baltimore, D.C., which is our... Um, reinforcements for the Union. And now here's another big part of this campaign system is the posture. So the units start out active, but they can they switch the passive if they don't have command points. Well they don't have to spend if they have if they don't have command points or if they choose not to spend command points, their posture gets turned to passive. And you can see here the limitations. So basically 
if it's a tide initiative, the Confederate can try to end, can decide to end the action cycle, or if it's rain, the action cycle is skipped and a bunch of other bad stuff. Um, so it's just the way that like nothing happens basically, and it benefits the Confederates by just they can move and kind of um, arrange their forces as they want, but the Union can't really um, do too much towards them. Um, what else to say? So we start obviously game one, game turn one. We can't start off map transfers until turn four. Turn seven, each side gets a bunch of reinforcements. So McClellan actually comes on the um, on the board as well as um, a couple other um, divisions. Sumner um, brings a couple of units from his corps on, I think. And then in the Confederate side, Stewart brings his cavalry and Longstreet brings his core. Goodness gracious. Um, so um, that's probably going to be when some of the action really gets started. Um, I'm using these sheets that you get off of like Board Game Geek to keep track of fatigue and manpower instead of putting these either on the board or on the um, off map force mats. The force trackers. Um, are cool if you're playing somebody else because it's kind of a fog of war kind of thing. You can put a force marker down and then keep track of the force off map on the mat. But if you're playing yourself, it's just a lot to keep um, track of. So this just makes it easy. I highly suggest printing these off if you uh, are playing by yourself. The Richmond defenses, obviously we don't have much. We just have, these are just Richmond militia units under these forts um, not released as wise as brigade um, he can't move until really late in the game unless a union unit gets within a certain amount of uh, hexes tombs tombs's brigade just arrived from georgia i think historically and historically he would have marched down to the peninsula but uh, we might have other ideas for him and of course up there is johnston and um, Kershaw's brigade and who else is here? DR Jones's brigade is in Ashland. So they're going to either want to train down to here and then train out here on the, uh, I think this is like the Richmond and York River Railroad, which is like this red line here that goes all the way out to West Point. Um, so we'll probably want to get to White House Station, get with DH Hill, and start making a couple of defensive lines. So the first line will probably be on the Mattapanai, the second line will be on the Pamunkey, and as you can see there aren't any, aren't many, very many natural crossings on uh, the Pamunkey. So we have Smith's Ferry and the Railroad Bridge on at White House Station and Garlic's Ferry, Retreat Ferry, so uh, oh, William's Ferry is there too. So we can send maybe cavalry out or maybe a brigade to start trying to destroy some of these ferries and then force the Union to um, really kind of commit to building a pontoon bridge and slowing them up a little bit and then maybe if it if it rains maybe if we get lucky with some rain then it'll be even harder for them to um, lay that pontoon bridge down and really I think as the Confederacy it's just the delaying game trying to wait it out as long as you can um, and delay it as long as you can because once you get here though we have some good defenses around Richmond we have these redoubts um, not these the ones that say 63 plus it's because you use the same map for the grants takes command scenario so these are only here for that scenario but these are all a, a game and um, obviously we can start destroying some of these bridges on the Chickahominy and um, McClellan will have to deal with that just as he did historically. So yeah, hopefully you're uh, looking forward to that, uh, this campaign, and hopefully you tune in for the rest of the episodes. Um, so here we go, we're on to Richmond, and until the next one, take care, bye for now.